All right, uh, first things first, uh, I got a new face mask solely because this one is a lighter color and doesn't blend in with the blue screen as much. So that should make my life easier in editing. But if you don't like the way this one looks, just let me know. Also, I have been a little sick recently. So if my voice sounds terrible, I apologize, but we're just gonna run with it. Um, that being said, nine millimeter is finally a usable cartridge in Tarkov again. Yay! But before we get into all that, Opera GX is back for the third time, making this the longest relationship that I have ever been in. I've already talked about Opera's in-depth customization, which allows you to change everything from your shaders to your background music to the sounds that each individual keystroke makes. The store has an insane amount of variety to choose from, so much so that if you scrolled through this entire thing and told me there wasn't at least one mod that you fell in love with, I would be very surprised. You can even mix and match the different parts of each mod, pulling the wallpaper from one and the music from another to create whatever combinations of sights, sounds, and colors that you want. Just be sure not to go overboard, otherwise you're going to end up with some brain rot inducing combos like Call of Duty Zombies as a wallpaper and then Hamter every single time you click a key. Switching to a browser with this level of customization is easy thanks to Opera's quick import feature, which automatically pulls your browsing history and bookmarks from your previous browser and puts them into Opera automatically. Even better, Chrome extensions still work in Opera, so it's easy to make the switch and you're not missing out on anything once you do. Opera has you covered whether it's customization, convenience, or deleting your cursed browser history. I'm not kidding, Opera actually has a feature where it will delete your browser history and replace it with a different artificial one that makes you look like a functional member of society, even if you die. You can download Opera with all its features using my link in the description below, and thank you again to Opera for sponsoring this video. All right, contractual obligations complete. Let's just jump straight into it. Um, PBP. 9x19 PBP is really good. It has 39 pen and 52 damage. That being said, the only way that I am aware of to currently get this round consistently is to craft it using the level 3 workbench. The workbench is decently attainable for quite a few people, but for the sake of the average casual, I'm going to be primarily focusing on AP 6.3. AP 6.3 is actually a solid round now for quite a few reasons. Um, one, it's only three bucks now, which is a lot better than the seven to eleven dollars that used to be charged for this freaking thing. And you're able to buy 180 rounds per Peacekeeper restock instead of the original 90 which was far too freaking low. Onto the weapons themselves, most of them are actually really, really good again. Notice how I said most of them. Um, um, the vector is pretty good. You can use it if you want. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of this thing. I just had really bad luck when I was using it. Like, why do you have a level six mask of face shield on nighttime customs? Why? That being said, if you want a more meta SMG that has 950 rounds per minute, just use an MP7. You're sacrificing 10 rounds for better ammo and just a better weapon in my opinion, but to each their own. The MPX is unfortunately still kind of trash. I tried using it a lot, but the side-to-side -side recoil made it difficult to strap a Monstrum 2X on it and get those mid-range sprays, which it used to be so, so good at, which is just really disappointing. It, it's still pretty good in close ranges, but honestly, it's just kind of overpriced, underwhelming, and just an overall disappointment whenever I used it. So unfortunately, the MPX is going to remain kind of in the I wouldn't recommend category, but it is better than it used to be. Now we're talking about something interesting. The MP9N has quickly become one of my favorite weapons in Escape from Tarkov. You're getting really, really close to the disgusting rate of fire of the Glock 18, but what's nice about the MP9N is that it's actually viable beyond four feet. So yeah, this thing's really freaking good. While I was making this video, I learned the best way to use the MP9N is to be stupidly aggressive with it. The dumber it is, the better it works. I don't freaking know why. All I know is that the absurd rate of fire on this thing will let you get away with a lot of dumb shit. Even better, it is dirt cheap. Seriously, this thing costs like 20,000 rubles on the market and its attachments aren't that much more expensive either. So you can get a fully modded suppressed one of these for under 70k. It's a disgustingly cheap weapon. 
Because of its absurd rate of fire, playing aggressive and barrel stuffing anybody will get you the win 9 times out of 10. It's also just perfect for those oh shit moments of pure panic where there's a guy chilling in the freaking roof. I think I invented that spot and I didn't even check him. That being said, I do have to call out the major issue of this weapon. You run out of ammo a lot with this thing. You have the largest magazine you can hold is a 30 round magazine. This thing has a rate of fire of 1100 rounds per minute. Because of this absurd rate of fire, if you're ever going to be fighting scabs, I highly recommend you swap it into semi-auto. Because otherwise, on full auto, by the time you realize the scab is actually dead and dropping to the floor, you're already going to empty your entire mag into it. So just use semi-auto, otherwise you're going to be putting a lot of lead into a body that's already crumpling to the floor. Because of its strengths and its weakness, this thing is really, really good in closed off areas like the dorms or the underground bunker section of reserve. Those areas where you are able to peek, do a spray and move forward before immediately ducking back into more cover to reload and then rinse and repeat. It is the perfect tool for the close range fights, especially when you have to kill a cowardly rat that's just chilling in a corner like I, I don't typically go after people who either choose to play the game slowly or choose to hold an angle knowing that someone is coming down the hall. But for God's sake, this man was chilling in dorm room 214. Doesn't seem so bad until you realize that I had already killed somebody in the hallway and looted their body. He didn't move. Okay. Maybe he thought it was bait or something, I don't know. But then I made my way down the hall towards him and looted a wooden box right outside his freaking dorm room. Seriously, I am head down, ass up, completely unaware of my surroundings, looting this box. All he had to do was wiggle a tiny bit out of that room and I am done. But instead, he just sat there, so... My brother, if you moved, you probably wouldn't have died. I love this gun, highly recommend it. Just be sure that you keep decent track of your ammo and have a place to take cover to either reload or repack your magazines. Otherwise, you might end up in an awkward situation like this where I only had like nine bullets left and had to totally finesse a final kill. All right, now the 9mm SMG that I actually really recommend you use. Uh, the MP5. Let's be honest. The MP9, it's good, but it's kind of situational. It's really, it really only shines up close. The MP5 is a very versatile weapon. Seriously, I was using this thing, absolutely fell in love with it while I was making this video. Especially if you mod it into an MP5 SD, this thing becomes a headshot machine. The recoil is better than a fully modded out MPX. This thing has basically no horizontal balance. It's just a very minor shift upwards that you can easily counter just by pulling back slightly and it becomes a laser beam. This thing is awesome. This thing is really good at close to medium range, even with a red dot. It just is, it's a laser. It's so easy to use. And because of the fact that the recoil is practically non-existent nowadays, penetration through volume of fire is actually a fairly viable strategy again. That being said, if you put a Monstrum 2X, it becomes an absolute terror at medium range. It's even fairly decent at long range. Like, you're not gonna really try to counter snipe people with it, but let's say you're an idiot, you ran across the open in an interchange field, and both of your legs just get sheared off by a 308 round. This thing just might save you from one of the stupidest fights I have been in in a while.
It's a headshot machine against players. It's excellent at dropping scab bosses. All of these clips are done with AP 6.3. Like none of this is 7N31. So if I put 7N31 into this thing, imagine how much more terrifying that would be. Even the dumbass builds can be pretty effective. Yeah, even with an MP5K with a terrible red dot, I was able to achieve far more than I expected. So yeah, I highly recommend the MP5. All right, so uh, yeah, use the MP9N and the MP5. I highly recommend them. And that's about all I have to say about that. Um, Stereotype series will be returning as a result of popular demand. So let me know in the comments what you want to see and as well as whatever stereotypes you might have. Um, thank you again to Opera for sponsoring this video. My download link will be in the description and the pinned comment. So check that out if you're interested. Otherwise, um, yeah, thank you so, so much for watching, especially all the way to the end, and I really hope you enjoyed.